Today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Retro Flag GPI case. This is an incredible portable retro emulation handheld device made to look and feel like the classic Nintendo Game Boy. Now, a little late to the party, this came out last summer, but it was in such high demand that people were charging well over $100 just to have this available to them, and I just thought that was a little outrageous. Currently, you can get this for less than $70 shipped to your door, free shipping included from TomTop and Amazon. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at the Retro Flag GPI case, coming up. So I got mine from TomTop and inside I got the GPI case box, of course the Retro Flag Game Boy Pi case itself, the device, has a faux Game Boy cartridge that actually installs and holds the Pi. Pi was actually included from TomTop, so that was a nice surprise. And also inside it has a 32 gigabyte micro SD card also included. We have our DC power USB wall adapter, and then we also had a little micro tiny screwdriver in case you wanted to take off the back of this and access the Pi inside. Now, looking at the device itself, obviously this was made to look and feel like the original old school Nintendo Game Boy with some additional upgrades to improve the gameplay experience overall. So we've got the additional Y and X buttons on the front. And then on the back, we also have some L and R shoulder buttons. Um, these are probably the only thing I'm not a big fan of on this case. Everything else I really enjoy, but just ergonomically when I hold this, I turn it over, my fingers always sit way higher than down here, so I have to kind of play it like I'm only holding it on my fingertips to actually use and access those L and R buttons just for my adult size hands, but primarily I've just really enjoyed the retro gaming aspect, so I've only played games that truly need four buttons and don't really rely heavily on the L and R shoulder buttons on the back. On the side we have our volume wheel, and we also have a contrast, which is really just a brightness for the screen. The screen is very bright, very beautiful, backlit screen, so no playing in the dark like the old school Game Boy. You actually have the ability to play on a very bright screen. We've got a mono speaker, which sounds great. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the bottom there, so you can play silently amongst your friends if necessary. And then the DC outlet for the DC power. You can also Power this up with three AA batteries and inside you'll also notice the switch. This is for your safe shutdown of the Pi, so you'll have to install a script or make sure you're using a Pi image that already has the safe shutdown established because you don't want to corrupt your SD card by simply powering on and off the device without going through the proper channels on a Raspberry Pi. And then the cartridge itself again, the micro SD card is housed in the side of it. You just simply Pull that off and then you can have access to your SD card. Push that little grommet back in. Slide the cartridge in. I love how they put that together. I mean, it looks exceptionally authentic to the old school Game Boy cartridges and it just really nails the look and the feel that they were truly going for as far as replicating the old school Nintendo Game Boy. Throw some batteries in here. Battery life if you're actually using old school batteries, you're going to get about three to five hours depending on the games and the emulators you're using because some are more taxing than others. But go ahead and power it up and we'll show you some gameplay. All right, so on this image we got a little bit of everything. We got arcade classics, we got Atari, we got Atari 7800, we got the Daphne emulator, we got the family computer system, Game Gear, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Sega Master System, Mega Drive, Neo Geo, NES, PC Engine, PlayStation, and we got our options, Sega CD, Super NES, Sega SG-1000, Super Nintendo, TurboGrafx-16, and then we get the all games. So.
So overall, I'm really impressed with this thing. The only real gripe I have is what I mentioned earlier, and that's just the placement of the L and R buttons. It just sits a little too low for my ergonomic comfort when I'm holding this device in my hand. However, like I said, I really didn't intend to play a whole lot of games that were dependent on the L and R buttons, so that's not really a deal breaker for me. But the look, the feel, the sound, the performance, the amount of games, the you know, the, the quality of games, like all the way up to PlayStation that you can play on this little emulation device is quite impressive. So for the price of less than $70, I think this is a heck of a bargain and I highly recommend you pick it up. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more great nerdy content. And as always, thanks for watching guys. It really means a lot.